What have you found? <laughs> I don't know. That's why I want you to come oh. and have a look. So you're, gonna, you're going to have to help me. Louis Leakey had waited 20 years to find this tool-making human ancestor. Well done, my dear. Better eyes than me. But this was not what he expected to find. The skull was more ape like than he'd ever imagined. Oh, certainly not a homo, my dear, I'm afraid. Have a look at this. But, darling, just look at where he was found. It can't just be a coincidence. Yet it was in the same geological layer as the tools. The logic was inescapable. This must be the toolmaker, and therefore, the beginning of humanity. Leakey named it Zinjanthropus Boisei, after his financial sponsor, Charles Boise. It had a small brain, but massive teeth and jaws, whose muscles were so large they had to be anchored to a ridge at the top of the skull. But if Zinj was using tools, why did it need such powerful jaws? Leakey overlooked the question and announced Zinj as the toolmaker. For a year, the scientific world accepted Zinj as the toolmaking missing link. Then, in 1960, Leakey completely changed his mind. Mary was on her way from the camp into town one day when a can was dislodged in the back of her Land Rover. When she stopped to fix it, she noticed a familiar shape in the earth, another piece of skull of an entirely new, more human-like species. Leakey decided that this, finally, was his long-lost toolmaker. He named it Homo habilis, literally, handy man. Habilis had a larger brain and much more human teeth, which made sense if he was getting meat using stone tools. Though the tools Habilis made were little more than broken rocks, they marked the very start of human stone technology. But if Habilis is the toolmaker, why was Zinj also found with the tools? Leakey has stumbled across an incredible discovery, and that discovery is humans and human-like organisms coexisting in Africa at the same time. By the early 1960s, the whole model of human evolution was called into question, and with it, the very idea of a single missing link. For over a century, the model of human evolution had been a simple straight line. It began with a lower evolutionary form, an ancestral ape, and ended with the most advanced creature on Earth the modern human being. And somewhere in the middle, there had to be a missing link between the two. So, when Leakey found Zinj, it took pride of place. Until a new candidate arrived. All of a sudden, you have Hablis, this more human-looking animal. Both these fossils date to the exact same age, about 1.8 million years of age. So what do you do? You have to remove Zinj from the human line, and you have to place them in different lines. And what is the most amazing thing, in the same valley, within meters of each other, you have two species living side by side. And that changes or makes a whole paradigm shift in how we view human evolution. And so this line is all of a sudden broken apart. Suddenly, 
what had been a single line of descent had been replaced by a series of lines that connected to form a giant family tree. In the years between 1925 and 1965, over a hundred hominid fossils were found and categorized in South Africa alone. And they can all be placed in relation to each other by accurate dating. Some species are evolutionary dead ends, while others appear to be part of a line that leads to humans. But a number of human-like competitors occupied the Earth at the same time, with several routes to humanity. The only way to cut through the confusion is to go further back in time, to the root of the human family tree. Before we had a big brain, long before we used fire and language, before we even made tools, the creature everyone was looking for marked the very beginning of humanity. On the 30th of November, 1974, an American-led team was searching for the oldest human ancestor on Earth. And the search had a new focus. The northern end of the Rift Valley in Ethiopia. It was then possible to date rocks very accurately, so it was possible to be more precise than ever before about where to dig. Using new radiometric technology, they had dated the volcanic layers here to around three and a half million years old. Team leader Donald Johansson was a rising star in the world of anthropology. He knew Dart's Australopithecus africanus lived over two million years ago. And Leakey's Homo habilis at about one and three quarter million but they were on separate ancestral lines. He believed there was a common ancestor, over three million years old, the same age as the surrounding rocks. Johansson had been kept away from any digging by essential paperwork, a chore he was determined to finish but his colleague, Tom Gray, returned so, from the site with other ideas. How's it going? Uh, actually very boring. There were areas they hadn't stuff. surveyed for a while away from the main yeah, dig. Stuff. You need a break? I was thinking of taking a hike out to bed three. Yeah? You want to come? I don't know. I got to finish this. I mean, this is pretty urgent. I got to do something. The urge to do what he came here to do finally got the better of Johansson. Let's go. He made a decision that changed his life. They headed away from the site to explore a couple of isolated gullies. They had no idea they were just a few hundred feet from the greatest fossil find in history. But as the afternoon wore on, they had little to show for their efforts. They surveyed for a couple of hours. By mid-afternoon, the temperature was approaching 40 degrees, and all they'd found were a few teeth from an extinct horse and part of the skull of a pig. They decided to head back to camp. But Johansson had a hunch to look again in an old gully on their way back. Hey, Tom, this way. It had been thoroughly checked before and produced nothing. Hey, man, what's up? But today, something caught Johansson's eye. 
Come here, Tom. A shape in the dirt that just seemed too regular to be a stone. You see that? It was a fossilized an arm. arm bone. That's an arm. It's a hominid arm. And there was more. That's hominid too. Parts of a small skull. Jaw. Pelvis. Arm. Oh my god, this is... In all, yeah. nearly 50 what? pieces oh, of fossilized oh, skeleton. Oh, oh, watch, your f watch your feet. What do we have here? Huh? What's going on? Uh -oh. I don't know where to stand, man. I know, don't... <laughs> <laughs> this is it! This is what we've been looking for! I can't believe it! <laughs> One unbelievable thought went through his mind. What if all the pieces fitted together? Could they be parts of a single, extremely primitive skeleton? Hey guys! Come on! Woo! Come on! Yes! If Don Johansson was right, he was looking at the most complete skeletal remains of our earliest human ancestor yet discovered. What makes this individual an absolutely spectacular find is that she's so complete. For the first time, we had more than the odd broken bone of her one specimen. We had virtually an entire skeleton. What's missing on one side is present on the other side. I mean, it's so rare because these hominids didn't bury their dead. And in normal circumstances, if an individual died, the scavengers would come in, the bones would be dispersed. Uh, the mere probability that something is fossilized is extremely small. But to actually go in and find uh, such a beautiful fossil of a complete human ancestor is really a once-in-a-lifetime occurrence. In the first few hours following the discovery, the scale of the find was hard for the team to grasp. But that night, in the wind-blown desert outside of Hadar in Ethiopia, the realization of what they'd found began to sink in. Inspired by a tape of the Beatles' song, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, the new fossil picked up a name, Lucy. In Ethiopia, 3.2 million years ago, lived Australopithecus afarensis, Lucy. She put together the pieces of what one of our ancestors at this point in time really looked like. And it was a huge shock because what uh, she looked like was basically a chimpanzee. Lucy would have been a tree dweller in a changing land. For 50 million years, her ancestors had inhabited the trees of Africa. But the land once covered with unbroken forest gave way to grass and scattered woodland. Her diet was mostly the fruit of trees like this fig. But one tree would not support her for long. And unlike her ancestors, she could no longer swing to the next tree. She had to find another root. Lucy did something no ape had ever done. She stood up and walked on two legs. In her body and behavior, Lucy is in most respects an ape, from her diet to her small brain and habitat. The big difference is the way she walked. Walking upright is the first piece in our evolutionary puzzle, the first step on the road to humanity. The initial ancestral change that we see in human evolution is not brain expansion. 
Interestingly, it's not even stone tools.